heterogeneous equilibria involve reactants or products in multiple phases, two or more phases, maybe an aqueous solution together with a solid, something like a precipitation reaction, maybe a solid and a gas, something like heating a gas to drive off, heating a solid to drive off water, something like this. And here we really want to think back to that idea that pure solids and liquids should not appear in the reaction quotient. So let's write reaction quotients for these four example reactions shown here, applying this idea. So what I'm going to do is circle in red any phases that tell us not to include that species in the reaction quotient. So for example, in the first case, we have PbCl2 solid becoming aqueous Pb2 plus and two Cl minus ions, a dissolution reaction. And PbCl2 is a pure solid, so it's not included. The reaction quotient includes nothing in the denominator, simply a factor of one, and Pb2 plus concentration squared, uh, Pb2 plus concentration times Cl minus concentration squared in the numerator. In the second case, we have a solid on the left-hand side, calcium oxide, reacting with CO2 gas to form solid CaCO3. So these, those two solids do not appear in the reaction quotient and Q is equal to one over the molarity of CO2 or CO2 molarity to the negative one power there. In the third case, we have solid carbon reacting with gaseous sulfur, two equivalents to form gaseous CS2. That solid carbon does not appear in the reaction quotient, so Q is equal to CS2 molarity divided by the molarity of sulfur squared. And finally, we have pure liquid bromine on the reactant side here and gaseous bromine on the product side, so the reaction quotient here is simply equal to the molarity of Br2 to the first power because the coefficient on Br2 is equal to one. So looking a little bit funky, but keep in mind that wherever we omit these species, you can imagine there's a one there, right? So Br2 molarity divided by one, one divided by CO2 molarity in the second case. One important conceptual point about heterogeneous equilibria that we can see at this point is that adding or removing a pure solid or liquid won't have an effect on the value of Q since those pure solids and liquids don't show up in these reaction quotients. This is going to become important as we talk about how to shift equilibria, shift chemical systems toward products or toward reactants by adding or removing reactants and products in later discussions of Le Chatelier's principle.